Okay, so we're back and animating our character, and we've just added sound, but now we're going to go on and we're going to actually add lip sync, because that is really going to bring this character to life. Um, we're going to try to do this within 10 minutes, so we'll go fast, and there's a lot more detail you can put into it. But here's an example of where we're going with this. Oh, no, I don't have an example of where we're going with this. Uh, maybe I can find one. Is this going to be a good example of it? Ooh, let's give it a try. Ah, that's what we did before. Oh. Well, hello there. Oh, there he is, okay. So he's moving, he's talking, he's doing his job. There's where we're going with this. So we got it this far, we got the audio into place. We started putting the script up here, and I would suggest this is a good thing to do, to give yourself little cues. Because it'll remind you visually of what you need to do. So the way we did this is we made a script track, we hit F7, and then we can go over to a label, and I'm going to put Will inside that label. Will. And the is happening right about here. So F7, and I'll put a he. Sort of phonetic of what's going on in there. Well, hello. hello. And th is about here. F7. Th. And this is air, I guess. F7. Air. And you know you could do this. You could do it phonetically, like spell it as air. And it's sort of a huh at the end. You know, how much detail you put in there, how you animate, that's up to you. Better give this guy a mouth. So I'm going to go to this point in the animation. Now, all my cube dude is here. I'm going to start expanding this guy a little bit. I'm going to give him a face, and I'm going to give him a mouth on a second track. So I'm going to add another track here, and I'm going to do all my animation here at the root level. So this is going to be mouth. And cube dude is behind. And to start splitting these things up, okay, I'm going to hit an F6 that'll duplicate this guy. The way I constructed him is I have him uh, all in one symbol. If I look here, oh yeah, he's a movie clip called QB Character. Okay. I'm going to break him apart with a Control B, or you can go modify and break apart, but I like Control B. And break apart is going to let me take certain elements of his and move them around a little bit. Now what I want to do is give him some room for his uh, mouth to move around. I'm going to move him up a little bit so he's got a a little bit more room like this. I still want to have room for his eyebrows to move, though. So get the well hello there. Okay, so let's at this point in time, as we've done this, let's give him a mouth right about here, too. I'm going to keep this in sync, so I'm just going to go hit an F7 in the mouth thing. And I'm going to grab myself a brush. I'm going to do the simplest of mouths. And it's just going to be a brush. Let's see, the, the size of that brush is down here. It's a little bit small. Let's make it a little bit bigger. Okay, hopefully this is going to be big, big enough. Now I'm just going to draw on the mouth. So he's got a little smirk on his face. Again, I'm just doing this real fast. So it's nothing fancy. At this point in time, i got to give him a W shape. Right about there. So I'm going to click on this frame. Hit F7. That gets rid of that. That's unfortunate. What does a W look like? Well, this is where you want to do a little research. You do a little research, you can probably find yourself a, what's called a phoneme chart or mouth shapes for lip sync. And just to prove what you can find, you know, here's here's an example when you search for lip sync mouth shapes. Or if you do a search for, I don't know, phonemes, you'll find it in there somewhere too. Yeah, phoneme mouth shapes looks like this. So I found this reference. I kind of like it. So if I'm looking for a W for a W, ah, there's a W shape, something like this. Okay, I can draw that. I'd like to have a reference so I can see where the mouth was before. So I'm going to turn on onion skinning. There's onion skinning. Ah, yeah, so I can see where the mouth was in the frame before. And I'm going to try to draw this W. Now, maybe what you want to do is start zooming in to give yourself a little more fidelity. So a W is going to be, I think it was looking something like this. Something weird like that. Yeah, that's going to be his W. Mouth going up, little purse. And then there's an E for an E. Okay, so L. Okay. Here's where we want to get a little clever about this. I'd really like to build this stuff into something called um, a frame picker so that I can reuse this stuff really easily. So I kind of went, went a little bit too fast here, but I'm going to take this thing, I'm going to turn it into a symbol. That's F8 or modify, convert to symbol. The kind of symbol I want to convert it to is going to be a graphic. Graphics are very handy for this. And I'm going to call this mouth shapes. Say OK. As I look at the print, the properties for this under mouth shapes, I'm going to change some, some effects of this. Right now, a graphic style 
is what I've chosen. Not a movie clip, but a graphic style when I created this. Under the properties for this particular instance, I want to change it so it does not loop. I only want it to have a single frame. And then under single frame, you'll see use frame picker. And it's shown me that I've got one, exactly one frame of this thing to use. So, so far so good. When I do the eh sound, I would like to add another frame to this. I'm going to uh, double click this guy. And that means I'm going into the symbol up here. And I'm just going to say shape. Just because I'm addicted to putting labels on here. The next frame up there, I would like to make the eh sound. I'm going to hit F7. I've got the onion skin on so I can see where the last shape was and I can see the, the character in context. And I'll go back to my eh. Where's eh? Where? And you can kind of do this yourself. I kind of like this shape. Where? I guess it's going to, it's going to go from eh to an L. There's no eh sound that I have as a reference, but okay, that's going to be close enough. So just looking at it, okay, it's going to be kind of a weird shape. Make sure I'm in the right place. Got the right tool. And it looks like what I'm going to get is some teeth. All right. And I would also like to have, let's see, some white in there for his eh. And here's the thing there. I don't have white there yet. I could actually do this to speed up this process. I can store white in the um, stroke color, and I've got black in the fill color, and I can use the flip-flop so that I can quickly switch it back to white, fill in some white there. Whoops, undo. Here, aims a little bit better. And for the next time I'm going to draw, I can flip-flop this back so I could be filling in black and drawing with black. So this is doing the job. So I've got w and i got e. Now, same way we did before, maybe we want to put labels. Here's something that really helps. Let's zoom in on this. I'm going to add another layer, and I'm going to put some labels in there. Hit F7, get rid of this. Oh, frame picker, you know what? This would be handy if it was actually docked in here somewhere. I'm going to dock it at the bottom. Yeah, there it is. So now I can put the names of these shapes. That's a, a W. Good. Whoops, no, I want to put it in here. This is the W. And this is an E. Eh. It's supposed to be, actually, it's sort of an E. And it may not be dead on accurate, but it's kind of doing the job. And you know what? I might as well do an L at this point. What does my L look like? L looks like that. Oh, yeah, there's going to be a tongue and a sort of smiling sort of thing. Okay, I'm going to make a couple more. I'm going to hover like this down the two rows, hit F7. Oh, good, it makes me two new empty keyframes. So this one's going to be L. And the shape is going to be, and get the idea, I'm not working hard. I'm just getting the job done. L is sort of a big sort of smile. Sort of. Teeth going across the top, and I can kind of keep the top row of teeth matched up with where they were before, because top teeth don't really move when you're talking. It's more your lower jaw. There's a little bit of bottom teeth going on here, like this, and then there's a lot of tongue going on here. So like that. Here we go. Flip-flop it. Fill bucket. Let's give them some teeth. I better zoom in to get this. Yeah, that does the job. And then let's see, I gotta put some more black in there, flip flop it, fill it up with black, good. Then I gotta get some red in there. Okay, well, let's go get some red. And by the time I step back here a little bit, well, there's my well. Okay, let's put them into place now back in the animation. So I'm in mouse shapes. If I go back to the scene here, I've got and by the way, notice it's still zoomed in, so you can zoom back out if it makes things a little easier for you. So I got... So this is where he's going to say, eh, back to the mouth shape. I'm going to hit F6, and then I'm going to hit the eh shape. And again, because this is single frame, it's just saying, okay, it's going to use frame 2. This is frame by frame animation. This is about the L, so I'll hit F6. Get it to there, like that. So now I've got... And then I got a he, he. I wonder what a he looks like. Um, if I go back to my chart here, I notice I don't really have a he. He is kind of like, I don't know, I'm doing it with my mouth right now. You can make up your own shapes. So I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to double click back in there. I'm going to zoom back in there and I'm going to say, okay, I need a he. F7, click up here. He. Okay, back to the scene. 
I think, I hope you're getting the idea here. And zoom back out so it's a little more manageable. It's a little tricky knowing what you're looking at. And this is where he is going on. You can see with my labels up top. F6. L. I'll kind of give him a he. And then I got this L sound again. Oh yeah, well I got an L, so I'll just. So I got a he. And then I got an O right about here. Okay, I'm putting the O in. Double click. Whoops. And I'll go give myself an O. Now I'm zooming in and out. I'm not sure if there's a more efficient way of doing it than that, but F7. I am going to keep reusing these things as best I can. O. And an O would look sort of like that. Oh yeah, O is just going to be O. And this should be an O. Here's O. And then I got a THE. Okay. Do I have a THE shape? F6. I'm just going to put the thing in there right now. I don't think I have anything that looks like a THE. And THE is a really good one. Uh, where is it? Uh, where's that shape for the... Oh, there's the. THE is back to having the tongue and the teeth. Tongue touching the teeth. I don't think I have anything that's looking like tongue just touching teeth. So, go make it. You getting the idea. F7. Okay. Back to the scene. And, oh yeah, this one. We are definitely where the the is supposed to be. Zoom out so we can see the context. There. And this is all we're already at the point of eh. F6. And where's an air sound? You know what? I'm just going to make life easy and go straight to there. There. That's an E and an R. Actually, look kind of similar. Do we have an R up there somewhere? Yeah, R looks not unlike the E. Just sort of gritting your teeth a little bit. There. And then finally, if I wanted to close his mouth right about here, you know, I've already drawn a closed mouth. I could add it to my mouth charts, but if I just wanted to go get that mouth here, there's the closed one. I think I'll just take that and drag it to the end. Now, clicking on that thing, holding down the Alt key, I can click and drag and copy. Like that. Oh, hey, let's go see what it looks and sounds like. Um, you know what, I'm going to get rid of those eyes, because they aren't really in the right place. Shift F6 will make those things disappear a little bit. Let's test our movie out, see what it looks like. Well, hello there. Get it. So that went way longer than I planned to, but in 17 minutes we managed to create the mouths from scratch, got the sync up, and you know, we can add more detail. We could refine these mouths if you decided that wasn't the greatest E. You could go back to that particular symbol, double-click it, and go find it. But there's your secrets. Uh, I think having labels makes life way simpler, and having a phoneme reference, reference chart like this will make things easier. Good luck. I know that was a long one. Hope that was worth it to you.